Jennifer is here and we wanted to give her a, a touch up, a retouch. But the reason why we wanted to do the retouch is because sometimes clients come in and they have a very small retouch and all of, automatically we want to do it with a tip brush and a bowl. And I was going to show you how to do a quick retouch with a bottle, especially when you have a small regrowth. Because if you have a small regrowth and you use a brush, when you use a brush sometimes you'll overlap. Let's say this is her regrowth. And if I use a brush and I overlap, now I have color on the part of the hair that was colored already before. So what happens to that area is it gets darker than the desired color. So she'll have the desired color here, the desired color here, but then wherever I overlap, she'll have a band of extra dark. So color over color, we know that as a rule, color over color goes darker. So we don't want that to happen. So sometimes if a client comes back to you with a small retouch, bottle gets it exactly where you want it, and it's less chance of overlapping. So that's why, and on Jennifer, I want you to be clear on what I'm doing on Jennifer. She has a, it looks to you maybe that she has a large regrowth because you're seeing the blonde here, but what we're retouching today is her base color, not her blonde. So she gets two things done. Every month, she gets her base color done. Her natural level, she's a brunette, with a natural level four. But then she gets her base color, which is like a level seven warm. And then she gets highlights. So every month she's gonna do her base color. And every three months, four months, she'll do her weave retouch. So she's about due, almost due for a weave retouch. So right now we're gonna do her base. And then whenever she's gonna get her blonde retouch done, we'll bring the blonde to the roots again. So I want you to be clear, maybe from far away, you're going to think that I'm retouching all of this. I'm not. I'm just retouching her base, which is about a quarter of an inch. That's all. So let's talk about the formula. She's got a quarter inch regrowth. Her natural level is a natural level four, and her desired is a level Sorry, six. seven. There's a real easy way to figure it out. It doesn't work on everybody, but I just kind of wanted to show you one way. The other thing I need to know is we're not working on any gray hair. So I didn't write down gray hair here. And what we need to know about developer is 20 volume developer gives you lift and deposit, and it'll give you about two levels of lift, two to three. But it's really easy to remember it this way. That's why I wrote it this way. 30 volume gives you about three levels of lift, three to four. And 40 volume gives you about four levels of lift. So when you're doing permanent hair color, your product works for 45 minutes and it's going to give you both lift and deposit. So her long hair, I'm going to have a harder time uh, going through her hair because it's long. If I had somebody with short hair, it would be quicker. But since it's long, it's going to make it a little more difficult for me. So that's important, too, why I want to use a bottle. A bottle for, first of all, I'm using it because she has a small regrowth, but also because she has such long hair, I need time to work with her hair. And so if I can do this faster, then once I mix my product, it's going to work for 45 minutes. <coughs> so the quicker I get it on her head, the more effective and the more even my color is going to be. If it takes me 20 minutes to go through and do her touch-up, well, I've already lost 20 minutes of that 45 minutes. And it might not be a total fact, but if you think about color this way, if it works for 45 minutes, and it's going to do first lift. So first it has to open up the cuticle and remove and lighten some of her pigment. And it's going to deposit the color, the artificial color that's in the bottle into her hair. But if, if you can imagine, if the cuticles are closed, the color is not going to go all the way in. First step is to open the cuticle. So the first half, from one minute to about 22 and a half minutes, let's just say, is going to be her lift. And the last half, 22 and a half minutes through 45 minutes, is going to give her the deposit. So, like I said, if it takes me 20 minutes to apply it, I've already taken so much time from my lift. So by the time I get to the end and I'm doing her retouch and it's 20 minutes later, I might be getting only deposit there. I'm not even getting much lift at that point. So that's why a bottle is a really good idea to buy you time. Now again, a bottle is not for always, but it is gonna work for Jennifer.
My first step is I sanitized my hands, I did my setup, I sectioned and I draped her. I draped her, I didn't section her yet. And I put protective cream around her hair. And I am going to start in the back. I think I'm just going to section out the back, the sides and show you how I would do the back. Um, the side sections out. And I kept her hair the way she parts it. I didn't change anything there. And I don't know if you can see, she pulls a lot of warmth. And I asked her, did you ever put red in your hair? She said, no, I just pull warmth. Although, I don't she know. Did. I think this is red. She the rose gold. I read the yeah. rose gold. Oh, yeah. that one section. Yeah, yeah. she did the rose gold. But <laughs> even though, she still pulls a lot of warmth. Of course, a brunette <coughs> is going to pull a lot of warmth. When you go and you're doing your levels of lift, and you stop at a level 7, the contributing pigment is a very light color. Um, but she's liking it. She likes the warm. If she says, I hate the warm, I don't want to see any of this, I want an ashy color, then we'd have to do something a little bit different. So, okay, I think I'm ready to start. Now, formula. When you are, when you use these books, it's a real easy method or a real easy way. And like I said, it doesn't work for everybody, but it does work in this case also. You, you go to the client's desired, I'm sorry, her natural level, which her natural is a level four, and her desired level is a level seven. So we already know that. So you go from one to the other. You count the steps up. So from four to seven, you're going to go one, two, three. So it took me three steps up. Now I have to repeat those steps. One, two, three. If I use a level 10 on a level four, it's going to get me halfway in between that to that level seven that is her desired level. So it's a real easy way to kind of figure it out. Let's do it again. So you go to her natural level and her desired. You count the steps up. One, two, three. Now you repeat them, one, two, three. So I need to use a level 10 on a level four to get me to a level seven. This rule works if you're using 20 volume developer. Okay, 20 volume developer. Now let's say she says, you know what, I wanna to go to a level eight. She's a natural level four and she wants to be an eight. I will count the steps up, one, two, three, four. Now repeat them, one, two, three, there's no more room. That means I have to use oil bleach to give her her retouch if she wants to be a level 8. If I can't do it with tint alone, I have to use the next stronger thing, which will be oil, uh, which will be on the scalp lightener's bleach. But she wants to be a 7, so it works just well with the tint bottle. Now, I asked Jennifer, what have you used before? And she said, I use a level uh, 8, right, mm -hmm. with 40 volume. So, yeah, that makes a little bit of sense. That 40 volume is going to give her the extra lift. So I can do two things. I can go level 10, so my two options. I can use a level 10 with 20 volume, or I can use a level 8. But I have to get the extra lift somehow, so I can boost that extra lift by using a 40 volume. So either formula will work. Either one will work. What if I wanted to use a level nine? What level, what volume developer can I use? Thirty. Yeah, thirty. So that's another option. Or I could use a level nine with thirty. So all three formulas are going to give me the same end result. It depends on me what I want to use. So I was going to use Wella on her, and I asked her, "What do you use? What have you used before?" She said, "I've used Paul Mitchell." I haven't used Paul Mitchell hair color, um, but she says she doubles the 40 with Paul Mitchell hair color too because I guess the formula for her, Paul Mitchell is double peroxide too. So my concern when I use Wella is, Wella is concentrated color and evidently Paul Mitchell is too. And we have to double the peroxide with Wella. Any color you use, you're gonna double the peroxide. The bottle is one and a half ounces and you're gonna use double 20 usually with this, or double 30 or double 40. When you use double peroxide, it does irritate the scalp a little bit more. So I was concerned about her scalp if I use double 40. But since I did a consultation with her and she said, no, I always use double 40 and my scalp is fine, then that's fine. I could use the eight with 40 volume. But if, but if she says, you know, my scalp is always irritated after I use it, then I might go to that 10 with 20 volume developer. 
you know, because now I'm using a little bit less developer and it might irritate her scalp less. So, but I'm going to stick to her formula. The first thing I'm going to do is put on my gloves. I already untangled her. That's really important because I'm going to take my subpartings and, um, and it's going to take me a little bit of time to go through her hair because it is long. And remember what I said about the timing. I'm going to mix less than my whole bottle first. That way I mix it fresh when I get to the sides. It might take me a long time to get through this. So instead of mixing the whole thing and let it get die and get weak in the bottle, I'll mix less of it. I will mix one ounce. And I'm going to go with her formula since she's always used it. The 8 with the 40 volume. Level 8. So I'm going to go ahead and now remix. Yes. I'm sure that I'm getting it on there. I'm not even pinching anymore because I don't need to put my thumb through there. Since I'm on this side, I'm just going to go this way. By the way, your subpartings should be straight. It's really important to do straight subpartings. Uh, so how do I get straight subpartings? By a uh, brush. And I'm going to get the same effect, same if result. I take, I'll show you right now. If I take a messy subparting, let's just exaggerate it a bit, a zigzaggy subparting. I want to exaggerate it. And I apply to the scalp this way. Let's just do this. You can see that I'm not going to get an even result. So it is really important that you take a nice, clean subpartings, thin, and just squeeze. And try to keep your bottle pointing down because every time you lift it up and down, it takes you that much more effort to squeeze the product out. Now, because she has blonde on her ends, I'm trying to be careful and to keep my fingers clean, this hand, so that I don't get color on her blonde. See what I'm saying? I don't want to get color in here. But what about when you're using the thumb? You just always use those two fingers? Yeah, when you're using the thumb, you're going to be using these two fingers are going to stay clean, and the thumb is the only one that's going to stay dirty. So, of course, I can't go through the whole head, you know, on the on one side. So, I, I'm kind of divided it in half. I'll do a little bit on one side, go down, and then go on the other side to do the other part. I'm not going to rub it in because when I, when I put this section over, like this one, when I take this section and I push it, I just mushed the last section through because she has a small retouch. Now, if she has a bigger one, my thumb has to follow. And because I'm taking really thin sections, I'm taking them thinner than a quarter inch, which is what the manufacturer tells me to do, then I'm assured that I'm not going to skip anything. But I'm still going to check. Like this one, I felt like I took a little thicker section in the middle of this section here. So all I have to do is put my bottle in there and squeeze. You guys can see that there. Should I turn so the other side can see? When you mix, squeeze the bottle, put your fingertip on, and then shake. So when you do that, I'll show you. As soon as I let go of my finger, what's going to happen? It's going to suck in air, yeah. And it's going to go in instead of sometimes you mix it and it oozes out. Instead of it squeezing out, I just made it second. Hi, Rachel. How are you? The very Sleeping. You were sleeping. Original or you want? No. For, for YouTube, I think uh, it's like uh, I can understand it much better. Is, does your skin stain easy? You know, I stain, but a lot of clients, they don't stain. And some of them really stain a lot. And it's the worst thing when they stain and they leave your chair and they've got stain on them. Right now, just like the chemical is softening and swelling her hair, it's softening and swelling her skin, if I get it on her skin. So the longer I leave it on there, the more stain I'm going to get, right? The first half does the lift, 
the last half does the staining. So if I leave it until the 45 minutes and I think I'm going to get that stain out in the shampoo bowl when I'm shampooing her out, I'm wrong. I need to get it out now, not later. But before I'm done, I want to go back. I have product left. Why should I waste it? I'm going to go back through and repeat my steps, but maybe in a different order. She parts her hair on the side. I went to horizontal sections. Now I'm going to go vertical sections and just check and see if I missed anything. And so I'm going to go the opposite way and just repeat my steps and make sure I didn't skip anything. Uh, this is the time to do it. Not when I'm finished and I shampoo her out and she looks in the, in the, bowl, in the mirror and sees that there's gray hair showing through. If there's gray hair showing, I didn't cover it. That's the bottom line. Either I didn't use the right formula or I didn't cover it. There's no miraculous reason it didn't take. So I don't want her to find out later that I missed a spot because if she says something about it, I'm going to have to then mix the color, redo it, wait another 45 minutes, and then shampoo it out again. So what, what about timing? How long do you leave it and what about timing? I'm not going to go by the first bottle that I mixed. I'm going to go by the last one and what time I mixed, not what time I finished. If it took me 20 minutes to apply, then that's taking time away from my 45. I only have 25 minutes left of product life. So I want maximum deposit. I don't want to take it off early. Sometimes we take it off at 30 minutes. If you're depositing color, I want maximum deposit. Sometimes we cover the gray hair here and she'll go home and wash it a few times and then the gray shows through again. That means we didn't really leave it on long enough for maximum deposit. Maximum time gives you maximum deposit. Let's say I was lifting only. If I was lifting only and in 20 minutes or in 15 minutes I get the color that I want that she loves, I could take it off because I'm removing color. And once I remove enough and I see it in 15 minutes, if it's exactly the color she wants, I could take it off. But when you're depositing, you want to leave it on the maximum time for maximum deposit. Like I said, in your chair, it might look good, but after a few shampooings, or if she swims, she went on vacation and she swims, it's going to show right through again. We don't want that to happen. So I'm finished applying. So right when you finish applying, this is the time to clean up. So I will go around. You can use stain remover, or I could just uh, go around and wipe. And she, I asked Jennifer, she doesn't stain, so I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. <clears throat> so let's talk about a few things. Um, protective cream or Vaseline. When you put protective cream or Vaseline on the hair, or on the hairline, and you get it on the hair, the color's not going to take. So make sure you're applying away from the hairline, not on the hair. On the hairline, on the skin, but not on the hair it won't take. The other, thing, the other thing is, when you put your color on, uh, resistant hair resists color. It's like, I put it here, if this is a resistant strand of hair, it's going to resist it. Not even let it sit on my hair to soften it. So when you apply, especially around the hairline, you could take a Sanix strip. So let's say she had gray hair. I would take a Sanix strip and kind of stretch it out and put enough, thoroughly saturate the hairline and stick the Sanex strip to it here and here. Stick it to it here and here. Now what I'm telling that resistant gray hair is, no, you're not going to push this color away. I'm going to keep it matted, push it right there and leave it there. And that's what the Sanex strip does. Or end papers, whatever you want to use. Or Kleenex if you're at home. Or a piece of paper towel. Whatever. But if you don't saturate enough, my paper towel or my Xanax is going to absorb all the color. So I have to make sure that I thoroughly saturate the hairline so that when I put that on, it pushes it in. And that's what's going to work for your gray hair. So in this time, while it's processing, I should be cleaning my station. Um, sometimes you want to save this just in case, you know. But once I rechecked, there's no in case. I'm done applying. So I go clean this up. I can clean off my station. I first made sure I cleaned her off, give her a magazine or whatever to read. Uh, the other thing about color is, you know, we want, there's an oxidation process going on. When we mix developer with color, we're oxidizing the color. That means we're adding an oxygen molecule here. So when you mat it down and you rubber band it or you clip it up and you put it all flat, the air is not able to process your color. So it is a good idea to leave your color aerated 
it's not a good idea to comb it and mat it down. Leave it aerated. Let the air go through it and it'll help process it better. Yes? Yeah, good question. Let's say, let's say I wanted to use a demi-permanent, <clears throat> which is a weaker solution. So what we're saying with 20 volume is it's strong enough, or higher, it's strong enough to open up the door, the cuticle, to allow for product to enter. Well, if I'm using this and I'm working on somewhat resistant hair, I want to help it penetrate better. And we know that heat helps open up the cuticle too. So if I'm using a weaker solution and I use heat, now I'm strengthening that weaker solution and I'm ensuring that it's going to open up the cuticle to allow the color to go in better. So heat makes things process a little deeper, if you will. So sometimes we do that with conditioner, sometimes we do that with uh, bleach if you want to accelerate the process. So it accelerates the process too. But with her, I don't need to do that because I'm using a strong enough chemical to do what it needs to do. And even with perm solution, sometimes we'll take a milder perm solution and add heat to it to make that mild solution penetrate better because we're helping it go in there better. Yeah. Um, about the cream, if we're going to be making it, Oh. Farther from the hair, then what happens to the space that's in not between? Covered? Good question. So she's saying if I put the protective cream and I stay away from the hairline, what happens to that one area? So the best thing to do is clean up right after you're done applying. The longer it sits there, the longer, the more stain you're going to get. The less time it sits there, the less stain you're going to get. I could pour it on my hand and wipe it right off, and I'm not going to have any stain. So what about color removers? We know that alkaline products soften and swell. This is an alkaline product. So a lot of times they say, take a color off with color. So when you go back to the shampoo bowl, the first thing you're gonna do is take a piece of her hair and rub the stain with her hair. You know, because color will also rub it off. Kind of like oil, gets rid of oil. Um, so that's the first thing I would do before I add water. Well, the first thing I would do is wipe it off. The minute I finish applying, I'm gonna wipe it off and eliminate that. Problem. So it's developing. Oh, thank you.